relax it that way. Um, have your bartenders go without drinking if it's a problem. If it's not, let us make our business decisions. I think what Lieutenant had brought up was just the public schools. You know, it's easy to make it easier for them. So you're thinking that you don't need that, you could just directly work with the police? I, I think, I mean, as bar owners, it's only in our best interest not to have sloppy drunks behind the bar. If that's the problem, I mean, if we don't solve it and it becomes a problem, address it on a case by case basis, I think. But it, it's not a problem, so. Just how many resources on a problem that doesn't exist? <coughs> Alex Beard, 726 Elmore Street, Green Bay. Uh, also, run runners from run runners. I agree, obviously, with them as well, due to us policing our bartenders and making sure our bar is well tip top shape as much as we can. I also have a different aspect on things too. I was once a bouncer. Being a bouncer, we were also <coughs> trained to look at situations like that as well. For especially being uh, for bigger bars as like Ned Kelly's or other places like that that possibly would have bar uh, bouncers or not. I bounced at Shenanigans, which is now Main Street Bourbon Room. I never really had a situation where I had to stop a bartender specifically because uh, noticing if they're drinking too much. There was points where I could help if it got to a, a certain point, but for just that aspect itself as being uh, in the bar business other than being a bouncer. We do police ourselves quite well. And the other <coughs> times the owners are in the establishment throughout the, uh, throughout the day in and out. Um, that's Jeff and I, we do that periodically for rum run. Sometimes during the weekends, we have multiple bartenders. So, I mean, we're usually there to bar back or well, kind of keep an eye on everything. So, I mean, that's just my aspect on things. On the other side of being just an owner, per se, of being a bouncer. So. Uh, question? Thank you. I'd like to mention one more thing. Uh, currently in the Chapter 33 Municipal Code for the City of Green Bay, there's the barrack system in place. And uh, I believe there's uh, six points for disorderly house. And if I'm not saying this would probably qualify under disorderly house. Um, also, it would be 13 points of this disorderly house that leads to the closing of an establishment, which obviously if there was somebody too intoxicated to run an establishment and close down, it would be a serious issue that would be taken up with the city. I feel like something like this is already in place. And it continue to let us work with law enforcement to address any issues it comes up. Lawrence McCoto. I'm going to give you two addresses. My home address is 2067 Marley Lane. I live in Ashwaubenon. I also have an office here in Green Bay. Uh, that's A12 Fifth Street. Um, I want to thank all of you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm afraid though what I have to say may not be as popular to everybody else in the audience. But I would I ask. Guess you could just address the, the chair. chair I'm sorry. They'll hear you. Um, I would just ask that I have a chance to speak. Yep. Um, You're up. To begin with, I'd like to give you an idea of who stands before you. Um, <clears throat> I have been in the professional field, if you will, for human services over half my life, 35 plus years. And I've made a specialty of working with people who struggle with and have had problems in their life 
because of alcohol and other drugs, but mostly alcohol. Um, currently, I, am, I consult with and work with um, Point Beach Nuclear Plant, the Door County District Attorney's Office, the Department of Corrections, Department of Transportation. I am known, uh, referred to by the state of Wisconsin with the Public Defender's Office as their expert witness. In addition, I work with many attorneys in the Wisconsin area, and I travel mm -hmm. to several uh, county jails throughout the state and provide clinical assessments with people who are there being helped. Also, I worked in law enforcement for 21 years, and I worked in a town with 5,000 people or so, and our bars were open until 4 in the morning. We were busy. Um, I'd like to say to the people that came up here that thank you for sharing what you did share, and I'm very relieved that there are very responsible servers and responsible bar owners, and I was very glad to hear that, especially at a time where the issue of alcohol and drug problems and even <coughs> obesity is worse than it's ever been in our history. And I think we have to take steps to do whatever we can as responsible community members, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, leaders, to try to slow down this issue, this problem that's devastating this country and this state, <coughs> this city and this county. Two plus OWI arrests a day in 2018. Maybe that's down. That's okay, I guess. Okay? And yes, most of the servers are probably fine. But we need to do something to set limits, to have this discussion, and be sure that the individuals who are providing this mind-altering substance are in their right mind. It doesn't take much alcohol to affect our ability to make good decisions. Very little at all, actually. About 0.02 to 0.04. Our ability to make decisions and <coughs> not to experience being out of control with our impulses and our ambitions, inhibitions are lowered at a very low level. So one beer an hour will do that. We need people who are serving this substance <coughs> to other people to be in their right mind be able to make right decisions like that, and to be able to manage individuals who may not be managed. And so I feel that this is not a bad ordinance to consider. I feel it's in the right direction um, for, for our community. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Travis Engels, 622 Skyline Boulevard, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I am part owners in Nines, Gettners, and Syrups, downtown Green Bay. Um, my question is, has anyone looked into the actual enforcement of the ordinance and how much that would cost? Um, personally, uh, we do allow our bartenders to consume alcohol while working to an extent. Um, if at any point in time that they are visibly intoxicated noticeably, um, or there is a complaint, um, we deal with those issues. Um, In-house, they could face termination. Um, upon employment, they sign an employee handbook that goes through all the rules that we have as an establishment. Um, at the end of the night, they will come to one bar. If anyone is noticeably intoxicated and in any shape or form, I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, and they could face termination. Um, all of our tills are, you push a button, the till opens, you do the math in your head. Um, we trust all of our employees. If you were intoxicated while drinking, you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, we also have roughly 70 employees at any given time between the three bars. Um, each night we have approximately 30 between 
bartender sponsors. Um, sponsors are 100% sober. They are not allowed to drink during, before um, their shifts. The bartenders, like I said, um, they are allowed to consume a few drinks per shift, four beers. Normally, um, normally their shifts are anywhere from four to six hours. Um, they're allowed to have four beers per shift, four shots per shift, or two mixed drinks, which equivalents to four shots. Um, again, we manage this in-house. We have not had issues. Um, I would like to know, I guess, how the ordinance is going to be enforced. Um, if it's going to be on the establishment, the police, how much that would cost. Um, and again, if there is no issue, why, why are we trying to move forward with this? Any questions? Questions? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay, I mean, I'm, we're hearing a lot from these folks that, you know, everything, you know, responsibility and, uh, and such. You know, I think with the ordinance that uh, Randy's been talking about, you know, there, there would be some consistency at least with the police in that. It would be kind of across the board for everybody. With the Brown County Tavern League, is there anything, um, it seems like everybody kind of self polices themselves. So is there, is there anything that the Brown County Tavern League has on the books that says, okay, this is kind of the way things should be done? The or thing, the is thing, it up to them? Yeah, uh, very good question. The thing in our industry is that uh, we're all neighbors. There's people that have spoke here that aren't members of the Tavern League uh, that do run good businesses around here. Um, what, what happens is if there's a problem bar, we all know about it. And the police law enforcement does a good job of letting us know about it too. If there's one bad seed, it can ruin the whole batch. So we like to work together to, to try to dissipate any instance of that happening anywhere else. Right, and, and I, that's great. I appreciate that effort. But like I said, there's really nothing written or, or anything. It's just you know trust and, and doing that. The same as anybody running their own business. Yeah. I mean, you, you trust the people are working with you to do the right job. That's all I have. Thanks. Good question for you. Yes, on the. People that are intoxicated that are in the in, within the, the Tavern League Association. If you have got somebody that's intoxicated, they want to ride home. Do you use off of that? Oh, we try to condone using the, the safe ride program for for staff, but uh, we like to leave it open to patrons because we only get so much grant money from the state, and we do many fundraisers for that. Um, it has been done before, and it doesn't get done on a regular basis. Usually, people pay for their own rides. Uh, the lift. Or Uber driver that was here earlier said that he's seen less of a problem than ever before. So yeah, I think that you know the as far as you know helping out the patrons that are intoxicated. And I know you do it around New Year's Eve and yeah. different holidays. I, I think it's a great uh, service. It's uh, over double tier. It's over 2,500 over the last year. Um, I actually um, integrated Lyft into the Safe Ride program. It was just using the voucher system for cabs, and that is uh, just got passed through in Lacrosse. Which used over 8,000 last year, and now it's going to be uh, statewide, hopefully by spring, to where every county can use this as an additional service. So, good stuff. Good job on I think one other point, you know, um, you know, at the end of the night, a lot of times folks will say, "Look, I can drive," whether it's a bartender or whoever, if they've had a little bit too much. Do you, is there anything in place to <coughs> that any of the establishments to leave the vehicle there? Yeah, uh, actually a little placard of some sort there, there are, up tomorrow. Very good. Uh, there are different establishments that leave, you know, they, they leave notes on people's windshield wipers the next day. Um, I've actually, um, I'm going to start working with the city on a, like a safe parking initiative, like, hey, there's a car parked in the street. They got a, a good ride home. Uh, obviously, we don't want to condone this behavior, but we want to reward the fact that they didn't drive home. And as we did in our, um, in our media, our commercials that we did over the Christmas season, we just remind everybody, just leave the keys at home. That's the easiest thing yeah. to do. When you come out at night, um, just leave the keys, take a cab, Uber, or Lyft ride. That way you're not, you don't have that false sense of uh, you know, interpretation where I can drive home after I've had a, a few. That seems to be a good thing, but you know, we had pushback also in case of snow emergencies, leaving cars out, of course. that type of thing. So that there's all, so. all sorts of issues. I, I think culturally it's gotten a lot better in this area than it has five, six, seven years ago. And it's still moving in the right direction. And I mean, it's, it's not gonna change overnight. But I mean, steps like this is leading it to a better, better tomorrow. So, thanks, Tom. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I'm going to vote by Alder Vandalese. Thanks, Alder Sawyer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Doors now closes.
Well, I, I would just like to, again, kind of focus what it is I'm trying to do here, what I think we're trying to do here. Is a lot of people are saying there's no problem and we're problem focused. There is no problem. I don't want us to be problem focused. Then what are we doing here? What we are doing here is a bit of social engineering. We're trying to work on attitudes. The general, we're looking for at a bigger picture here of responsible drinking. If you put yourself in that frame of mind, responsible drinking. And then we ask questions from that. Do we say, is it responsible for people working with heavy equipment? Is it okay for them to go out and uh, have a supper and drink a couple and then come into work? Well, no, that's still not acceptable. For the police, for the fire, is that acceptable? Well, I don't think we would agree that that's responsible drinking, that, uh, that behavior. And so I would ask you to try to get in that mind frame and ask yourselves, is it responsible for servers to be drinking? We seem to be getting yes and no here. And I think we can craft a law that covers some of that ambivalence and some of those concerns. If there's a rush or if there's uh, it's okay to drink just a little, we can, and most of these laws do have, uh, it's okay to have an alcohol percentage of 0.4%. Uh, I think that would be something I'd ask staff to, to uh, look into as to a, a possibility including that in crafting our law. Um, I think uh, the server should be fine. That's what we do if they serve a minor. Uh, I think it, this is all on the server. They're responsible. Uh, I think we need to be punishing the owners. I think if uh, the server's fine, just like if they're serving a minor, the owners are now aware of that. They'll take action. They'll be responsible. And if they're not, then I think the police have other tools that they can uh, use besides this one as well to uh, work with that owner. I, I really don't see this law as really making much of a difference in how you're running your business or having interactions with the police. There's uh, questions about the cost. This, this not be any cost to this. The police are not going to be going in looking for servers that are drunk. We're not doing a sweep. We're not, there's no problem here. We're not addressing a problem. We're addressing an attitude, a social attitude, that it's okay to drink with your server, it's okay for servers to drink. Uh, we close the floor. We, we can open the floor again, but let me just finish up. Hold your thought. So that's what I would, I, I'm going to, we'll discuss here, and I think we will ask staff to uh, look at this and come up with a law, and I'd ask you to consider what we come up with and to get yourselves in that frame of mind and come back, and then we need to decide as a community what's our values and what we want, and however we decide is however this law will go. Um, uh, do we want to open the floor? Do we want to motion open the floor? First, okay, all right, motion open the floor, Brother Sawyer. Second, I'll second it. Second by myself. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Opposed? Floor is now open. If you have to fill up a uh, page, please fill it out and state your name and address. Um, D.D. Clue, 3330 Wiggins Way. I wasn't going to talk today. I was just sitting here to listen because mm -hmm. we are new to the business. We've only been in business for two and a half years. But in my time, I have seen aldermen and presidents of companies <coughs> go out to lunch and have a cocktail. You know, happens every day. And we go to work. We have a cocktail. We do have a rule at our bar. You're now not allowed to be drunk. But they are allowed, shaking dice, to have an easy shot. They're not doing crown. They're doing easy things. We are responsible enough to watch our business. You guys go out to lunch. You have a glass of wine with lunch. Come back to the office. Same thing. You gotta, you're respecting yourself, that you're good to do your job. Let us do our job. So, um, see, uh, having an ordinance with, that allows a certain percentage of alcohol, that would cover that, but you're still uncomfortable with that? Well, are you going to do 0 0.08? 0 0.04. 0 0.04? That's what the research has. Uh, there's been research on this. You know, but you go out to lunch, you have two cocktails, go back to work, you're going to be over 0.04. We work a four to ten hour shift. 
let, got to let us run our business. Deal with the problem people, like everyone said, we don't have a problem. So why are we here? There is no problem. You're going to make a problem by trying to enforce a problem onto a problem that's not a problem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Edie, uh, thanks for coming in. Um, how many folks work for you? Uh, we have five bartenders and three cooks. Okay, so at any given time, how many do you have? There would be one bartender, one cook. So it's easy to monitor. Yep, and we have fired people for right. being drunk behind the bar. Right in our regular, in our employee expectations, you're drunk behind my bar, you're fired. I was a perception that, you know, that I'm getting a little of that feel from some of the other people, but as far as you're concerned, the perception that if people um, that the servers aren't allowed to have a drink occasionally with the customers that that will change the dynamic between the server and, yep. and the client. So it's, <clears throat> it does. We have one bartender who refuses yeah, to drink. So somebody comes and plays bar dice, they want somebody to take that shot. She okays it with the client before, she gives her shot away to somebody else. But like you know, I said, you know, I understand that. But there's, people there's like to drink their service. Right. That's what we're trying to change. But that's, I'm, you're, I'm you're forcing it on us when you need to, you want to change the attitude of people, you need to change the attitude of people who go to the bars and drink. They want to drink with their server if they're shaking dice. Well, that's what I was warned. You know, there was, um, you know, I don't know how to say this nicely. I mean, we, you know, Green Bay has a lot of taverns. There's a lot of activity. You know, police have talked about things. We've had drunk driving deaths. Not a lot, but we've had them. And um, we voted the drunk city in America, what, a year ago or two years ago? This year. This year. Ago? Yeah, yeah. So all I'm saying is that, you know, some people celebrated that. Okay, hey, here we are. Look at, look at us. And I, I'm not saying you are, but what I'm saying is that there's a, a bit of a thought process out there that, hey, what Green Bay, we can really do it, have it on. You know, so you know if those are customers, that's not no. your bar owners or your bar staff. Okay. So Some are saying, customers. Right, and I'm just saying that. And you're imposing you know, something on that's not an issue. There's perceptions out there in the community. Some people accept it, other people just blow it off like, oh, that's just whatever. So I'm just saying that's all. But the drunkest town in America, Green Bay, it's not your bar owners, it's not your bar staff. It's Green Bay. Of course, you know, people are serving those people, too. So. Well, but we now have to say foot ride. I mean, as bar owners, we are doing what we can to keep them people off the road. And like Don said, most of them are coming <coughs> from home and house parties. So it's not all us. Right. Okay. Good. No other questions? Okay. Anybody else? Can I say one thing real quick? Sure. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. Jeff Hunter from 715 South Broadway. Um, <coughs> this absolute sobriety, the idea of that, um, it does open everything to interpretation. And what, what your intentions are at this point, they're very noble and, and, and they're you know they're 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 really really open. But we have all seen throughout history, we've seen how people begin to, to change those what those intentions were. And um, you know, it could become a point where um, where someone who's in charge decides to start picking on places and, and going in and, and you know trying to find people who are just having it one drink or you know who may have have, have walked into it. So I, I think that, that you have to be careful about how this might be utilized finally down the line. And I think that's what all of us are a little worried about is that this this could turn into a um, you know into a, a you know a Pandora's box. I, I appreciate you thinking about that. Thanks again. You betcha. Yep. Pardon my intrusion. I just want to say one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, Lawrence Nakoda from Green Bay and Ashwabana. Uh, I am a member of the Brown County Co uh, Alcohol Drug Coalition for Change. And we are a group of people who meet um, every month. And we have an agenda with committees to assist in making healthy changes in our communities with relation, in particular, to alcohol, but also drugs. And I'm here on behalf of that coalition because we are concerned about 
this issue of alcohol in our community. And we feel very strongly that any decision in the right direction is going to assist in addressing this issue and this problem in our community and helping <coughs> to improve it is the right decision. Um, yeah, there are people that go to lunch and have a glass of wine. I get it. I don't. But I'm not a prude either. The difference is, is that the people who are serving these mind-altering substances are people that we depend on to be in their right mind, to manage and to help and to keep people safe within their establishment. <coughs> in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Motion to close the floor by all three. Sawyer, take a moment of Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I think I said my two bits mostly. Any other thoughts here? <laughs> my thoughts are that uh, <clears throat> Hearing from the police department, we don't have a real big issue with this problem. It sounds to me like the, the tavern owners are doing a good job. I'm not in support of the ordinance. I'm changing, adding another ordinance. I think the, I know Green Bay and Brown County might have noted that we're the drunkest city in Green Bay, but, but I don't feel that uh, the bar owners are creating this problem. Uh, from all that we just heard here, uh, it doesn't sound like it's a big problem. So I'm not in favor of, you know, changing an ordinance or adding another ordinance. I, I think that uh, bar owners are responsible in, in the city of Green Bay. And if we had, if we had like 20 citations, 20 or 25 or 30 citations, <coughs> and say, hey, we've got a real problem here. I, I feel that we don't have a problem on this end. I think the Tavern League, as far as offering, you know, Right, share to get people home that are intoxicated from times, and, and I, I think that uh, just adding another ordinance, I, I feel that we don't really need it at this time. From, from what we've heard, as far as the, the number of the incidents, it don't sound like there's hardly any. So I'm not in favor of supporting another ordinance. And, uh, I think that you know, cabin owners are doing a good job at this point. I like to mention too that, um, first of all, thanks for everybody coming out and speaking. It was overwhelmingly against, it was like 10 to 1. But with that being said, I think a comment that Ron LeMay made, and he's still here, um, you just mentioned about this preempt, preemptive legislation, if you will. You know, and I, I thought about that for a second, and I think that's, you know, none of us wants to see people driving drunk on the streets. You know, we don't, you know, accidents, we don't want any of that. And we don't want to, you know, be all over the drunkest city in America. But I think with this particular ordinance, um, I think to preemptively legislate is, is a little difficult. I know that maybe we're looking for a paradigm shift here that, you know, people need to learn how to control themselves and figure out things that way. But I think in a case like this, um, uh, I'm going to have to concur with all these and uh, Stevens on this one as well. Thank you. Uh, I do want to bring up, I did speak with a, uh, an owner and I told him I would bring up his concerns. He's for this. Uh, his only uh, concern is that it just covers the city and uh, he believes it should be a state initiative. I think is a valid point to bring up. Um, Unfortunately, we only cover the city, so um, I think that is certainly something to be concerned about. I think uh, I would not, I'm going to start looking at I was putting a resolution together uh, for the state to take such action. We'll see where that goes. Um, but for uh, now, that was his concern, and I wanted to make sure that was put on record. Um, for my. I guess the, I'll make a motion that staff 
uh, look to create an ordinance uh, where we find the servers, where we allow an uh, alcohol level of 0.04%. Um, much else on the ordinance, what we need um, from, well, I just want to make sure there's anything else from staff here. Is there any other direction that would be useful that you're looking at right now? Just craft something and move it forward. Yeah, or, yeah. okay. Um, and again, I think if you're looking at this from a problem-specific standpoint, you're missing the boat not addressing a problem in that sense. <clears throat> this is a general look at our, we have the drunk is sitting in Green Bay. What can we do about that? We can promote responsible drinking. What is responsible drinking? Well, I think looking at servers and saying it's irresponsible for them to be drinking on the job, it's not a big step since it's already by most everyone here considered best practice. Or not necessarily, they can't have, you know, they got to be teetotalers. You can go up to 0.404%. It's what are our values, and that's what we're focusing on, and that's what we're trying to implement here. You are doing a great job. This is not a slam against you. This is not an attempt to fix a problem that doesn't exist or, or to go out and, and harass you in any size, shape, or form. The police have got enough to do. They're probably going to be, this would probably come up uh, through if, if uh, they're called on a, for a service call. Uh, this might also come up if the server served a minor and was also intoxicated. Might be why they served a minor. And then I think it would be appropriate for that server to be deemed for that as well. So think of our values. Think of, is this worthwhile? I think changing an attitude, not only publicly, it's not okay for servers to drink, it's not okay for me to drink with my server. Is that what we want as a community? Yes or no? It's up to you, it's up to the community. I'm bringing this forward. I think it's worth bringing forward and having this discussion. Where we go is where we go. So, that's my two bits. And I find it interesting that people who voted against uh, second goal to make a statement about alcohol are now opposed to taking an actual least step that addresses attitudes towards alcohol. Uh, I, I, one of the reasons this came forward was the, the concern of Alders and uh, the mayor's office uh, about alcohol in our community and what we can do in a positive way to address it. I think responsible drinking is it. Maybe this is a part of it, maybe it's not. We'll see. I think after hearing what the police said, you know, that it's 98, 99%. I heard a lot of, you know, we listened to testimony, Randy. You know, on Again, a lot of, it's a lot not of a problem. So, and it's I know you, you've mentioned that on numerous occasions. So, you know, yeah. we, we got the point. We understand where you're but coming from. But then why bring it up? But what? Then why keep bringing it up as an Who's issue? bringing it up? You <laughs> 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 just did. I, Okay, go no, on. Finish. Finish up. I'm out of order. Finish. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and this is this is your opinion. So, and I think you said you had some direction from another owner, if you will. You know, I, I was on a drug alcohol task force after that couple passed some years ago. So, I you know I think it it, it is important that we are responsible all the way around. However, I think in this case, I, I just feel that with the Brown County Tavern League and, and the way things are shaping up, that they're on the right path and they are working along with the police departments. And you know, they have, there's a good relationship there and they will self-monitor. So I think, I think there's a strong push for that. Is it perfect? No. But I think in this case, um, I'm gonna continue Well, I made a motion to staff. You made a motion. Yep. Is there a second? So the motion fails. Uh, it's a motion. Then I make a motion to put that on. Did you see the second? Did you see the place on the file? 
correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Motion by Alder Stoyer is received and placed on file. One second. I just need to, there's an option for, for a motion to fail for lack of second. Yep. Oh. So I have to, yeah. Oh. That's not in there? No, you have to, the way that it's set up, you have to do a motion and a second or it won't let you within. So close out the window. Now we have a motion to by Alder Stoyer to receive a second. Second. Second by Alder Vanderlees. <coughs> we'll need to vote. Start vote or uh, roll call vote. Yep. Yep. Yes, vote is a. Uh, Yes, I'd like to change it. Yes, I'd like to That passes to receive and place on file three to one with all this panel voting now. Okay, thank you all. We are almost finished here. Discussion of possible action on the general ordinance number 1-19, the ordinance creating section 29.513, Green Bay Municipal Code, leaving keys in a vehicle, previously discussed at the January 7, 2019, protection on all the things meeting. Yes, so um, the ordinance creating Well, I think we'd like to look at uh, the fine and uh, reducing it. I don't know, uh, 175, 50. But uh, we're gonna have a discussion on that. Any thoughts on uh, the numbers? I have a number. Okay. My thought was that the fine would go towards people that left the vehicle in and his car was stolen. So it'd be some of a service fee in yeah. a way? Okay. And it would be so there it's just for people who have their vehicle stolen, not for anybody who's like if the keys were left in the car, car. the car was stolen, mm -hmm. it should fall onto the car owner, left the keys in there, and now we have the police department involved. The car owner should be responsible for the services that we provide. Yeah, you can see that I think believe, I believe there is some municipality that does it that way. They charge the towing at the end of the towing fee, uh, which I think we would do anyway. It's the actual tow it. We've done that, right? It's my understanding that if we recover a tow vehicle, the department essentially keeps the tow bill. Um, that, that when we recover a stolen vehicle and tow it back to the police department because we're processing it as a stolen vehicle, it's, I guess, the cost of us doing business, bringing that car back to the PD. We don't push that cost on to the owner of the vehicle. My concern with that is um, well not a service fee if it was a fine that they could then uh, go to the city attorney and uh, work out whatever needs to be done there because there, there are people who are um, not well, well endowed in their means and maybe can be community service or so if we look at it as a fine, that would be fifty dollars, hundred dollars. What do you think? Any idea? Oh, I just got a couple of questions before we get into yeah. that. Let's, sure. Yeah, let's. Chief, I'd like to. Chief wants to ask. Want to? I'd like to. Sir Andrew Smith, um, the biggest complaint I got when we put this ordinance out there was that we would be victimizing the victims a second time. Okay. 
And everybody was concerned that, chief, you just want to go and cite someone who's already had their car stolen and add insult to injury and make them pay a fine more. The other thought is, if we did say we we're going to cite the victims when they recover their car, if they reported that their keys were stolen or if we find in, keys in it, they would say, my keys were in it, he must have broken my house or he must have uh, taken my key from somewhere or got it on my purse at the grocery store or whatever. So my, the big concern I had and the most calls I got in this whole thing was that we would be penalizing the victims again. And I assured people that the intent wasn't to penalize the victims again, it was to prevent crimes like this from occurring. Just anecdotally, and I might, I might not have sent it to all of you, but uh, we did the stats run again last week. We had nine cars stolen in Green Bay. Five of them had the keys in them when they were stolen so far this year. That's on top of 50 last year, 20 of which had the keys and were running at the same time. So it is a problem. It continues to be a problem. Um, and I'm completely fine with whatever you guys decide as far as a fine or anything like that. So Chief, I was going to ask you, uh, this is on streets, public places, etc. This would be on public uh, streets, on roads, parked outside houses, not on person's personal property, but it would include private property open to the public, gas stations, mini malls, things like that. You know, I know you brought this forward a while back, and I was privy to a lot of this too, but I was just wondering, do you have any uh, facts or figures on cars that are stolen out of driveways that are wandering? I mean, that's private property, right. but that's still a potential police call. It is a potential police call, so very likely. Is there, is there some kind of number? Numbers I don't have it broken down between how many were stolen on private and how many were stolen on public property. I don't have those that, statistics. Is that something that is readily available? I could probably get that for the next meeting. I'm, I, in fact, I may have it on my computer if I dig back through the meeting. Well, I'm just saying, I, I think just, just for information's sake. When the police department goes out for a theft vehicle, do you know the average cost? cost? Kind of, we figured it out between the initial report, somebody calls 911 for the operator's time, have an officer go out there, take a report, canvas the area, and look for the vehicle, put the report in the system with our records unit, then check the area. If we find the vehicle, then recover the vehicle, do the paperwork for that, have the vehicle towed back to the station, process for pink fingerprints if that's what we need to do, um, and then release the owner. Ballpark, we figured it was about $500 in officer's time. That's each time a car gets stolen. So multiply that by the 110 cars that were stolen in Green Bay last year, it's a pretty steep statistic. In addition, the the glide path, as Alder um, used to say, Sladek. That, Sladek used yeah. to say, the glide path is gliding in the wrong direction. Auto theft is trending up in Green Bay, not down like most of our other crime. And my challenge will be, if this isn't a tool that we can use, then I intend to use it as a tool. I want our guys to be able to warn people, hey, sir, I can't help but notice your keys are dangling in your ignition, your car's running as you're going into the little gas station here. Just a reminder that you can be cited for that, and that's what I hope our officers do, and use it as an education tool, which is kind of what is happening now with all the uh, discussions that we've had about this. I hope that that's what this is a tool used for, not a tool to hammer people or to take money out of people's pockets. Let's say if the ordinance wasn't in place though, that you you'd still would tell people. Well, we'd certainly be able to warn them, but there's no teeth but behind there's no teeth. Them. Right. And in any kind of traffic situation, there's three things. There's engineering, there's enforcement, and there's education. The engineering is happening as we go along. More and more new cars are coming up. They don't function without the key fob in the car. So it's almost a self solving problem and maybe two, three, five years down the road we won't be having this discussion because all the old cars will be uh, we, we have the new key fobs. There's uh, education, which is what we're doing now, letting people know that, look, this is the problem, which is what our officers are going to be doing. But the enforcement part is also there. It's something that our officers can say, if I come and I see you doing this again, Mr. So-and-so, um, you're liable to get yourself a citation. Please do us all a favor. Just take your keys out of your car when you're, when you're not in. One quick question for you, Chief. Sir. On the tool part of it, you see there's, there's the, the Green Bay Police Department is not paying for that tow part, are they? We, the city is paying for the tow. The city right. pays to have the vehicle towed back to wherever it goes. So well, my, my thought is that uh, those costs, if you, if you have your car stolen, if you left your keys, in, I, I think you, the, the towing part of it should be put back on the, the owner. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I know other municipalities do that. The problem with doing it for just the people that had their keys in the car is they'll lie to us and they'll say the keys weren't in the car. I have no idea how the crook got those keys. But regardless, uh, you still had to tow that vehicle. Correct. 
the towing, I think the towing fee should be put back on the, the owner of that vehicle. That's my thought. And uh, that would solve, that would, that would help out. Bigger than a fine, I think, as far as the towing costs are what, probably $100? I think 25 bucks a towing cost. So it's not but that's that contracted. That's, that's contracted through heavy duty that is twenty five dollars to bring it from wherever back to our police department. If the regular public called, um it'd be, be more okay. Be more. Right. Uh, we get a pretty good deal. I gotta get a police rate. <laughs> Leave your keys in your car somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be getting uh, if we look at this or if you're looking to try uh, we, we could look at that portion of the you know, the towing cost would be we, we well, I, I think if I think if we make it a fifty dollar fine, we're covering everything, and and, and we're we're simplifying it. Um, it's and I don't know if we want to just single it out against people who've had their vehicle stolen. If you're leaving your keys in the car, let the police, because that's part of the the process here. The whole purpose is to educate people and have a little something to. A little stick to go with it. Right. It's like jaywalking. You know, who gets hurt when somebody jaywalks? The jaywalker. But it's nice to be able to tell someone, hey, it's a fine if you do it or if you fail to stop for someone in the in the crosswalk. It's a reminder and that there's a little bit of teeth behind it. And my challenge to anybody would be, if not this, what? If this isn't going to work or we don't want to do this, then give me another idea. If anybody's got a better idea about how we can knock vehicle theft down, one of the only crimes in Green Bay that's trending in the wrong direction, if you don't like this idea, let me know what a better idea is. I'll run with whatever's the best idea. You're saying you're getting how many awards so far this year? We've had five. Five that were stolen with the keys in them uh, during January. Nine total vehicle thefts. But that's a that's up a tick from where it was last year again. And last year was up, uh, I think, 8%, 8.2% over where it was the year before. So it's trending in the wrong direction, which is worrisome for me. And it's one of the only crimes in Green Bay that's trending in the wrong direction. Have you talked to other municipalities that have something like this in place and how it's worked for them? Yep, I've talked to, well, our, our staff has talked to several. I talked to uh, Eau Claire uh, personally, and they said they've had it on the books for something like 50 years. It's very rarely used. And what they see is that it's decreasing. Their, their thefts are decreasing. They're trending in the right direction for them. And they attributed that to the fact that not only do they have this tool to use to warn people, but also the technology is changing so much, making it harder and harder to steal cars. You know, back in the old days, people would hotwire cars and you'd see a wire going out of the trunk and coming in and somebody would touch the two together. Then they'd smash the column on the GM products or they'd use a, use a screwdriver and break the ignition. Uh, that doesn't work on new cars or newer cars. And the newer cars, the best ones, are the ones that have a key fob that the car won't operate if your key's not in it. Has a remote start, push the button, you can warn your car up all day. If, don't have to worry about it. It's being stolen. Well, I'll make a motion that we uh, we do have a better vote. Oh, yeah. Somebody wanted to speak. Yep, yep. Someone wanted to speak. Let's make a motion. Open the floor. Motion open the floor. Thank you. I, I did almost release. Yeah. <laughs> Byler Stoyer, second Byler Vanderlee. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. If you haven't filled out one of the sheets of paper, please. No, it's going on. Oh, it is okay then. Yeah, no, but I'll just continue to talk about the issue with the yep, yep. ticketing part. Keys in the car there. Yep, please state I your name and address. Please pardon. State your name and address. Lyle Wilkip, 1942 Zaysi Avenue, Green Bay, yep. Wisconsin. I didn't realize that was such an important issue for the police department to go around and make sure that keys aren't hanging in a car or a car isn't running. I think we're getting too many regulations that are feeding into our private lives. And I can't see the problem. I would think it is better to get that hotheads and drunken drivers off the road and ones who are running the stopping bowl lights, those not stopping at the lights and that. I think the ticketing speeders I think is a lot more important than if I leave my keys in my car or if it's winter and it's cold, I'm going into the drugstore for 10 minutes, I want to leave it running to keep it warm. I shouldn't have to worry about being fined for that. And I just don't think it's, I don't know, there's too many things that are privatized that I don't think they should be put in. People ought to be, I don't think people are that dumb that they know if they leave their keys in the car, there's a chance of getting it stolen. And if they don't, don't care, why should we worry about it? Let them get the car, let them get paid a toy and get it back, whatever it costs. But that's their responsibility. I don't think it should be ours. So I don't think that's something that we should in that. Because like I say, I go to the drugstore, 10 minutes to go shopping, I get to go look around things. I come out, and my car was running to keep warm, and I get a ticket. Well, uh, you know, uh, 
I think there's, like I say, getting a pothead and drunken drivers and his speeders and all that off the road is a lot more important. And I didn't realize they had police department at that much extra time to devote to key left in cars and cars running. Uh, I don't think that's something that should be enacted. I would hope that you don't recommend that to the city council. I think it should stay like it is. And if I'm dumb enough to do that, that's my tough luck, not anybody else's. And I'll pay the consequences. Yeah, well, Ms. Rezazi, thanks for coming in. Oh, no, you live on Zazie. Yeah. What, what's your name? I tell you what, my wife said I came tired. here, and I think I came here. I miss a lot of conversation yeah. here. <laughs> well, anyway, um, thanks for coming in. What's your take, though, you know, and I understand where you're coming from, but what is your take on the fact that time and money is spent by the police department, you know, once this happens? Do you feel that the owner should be liable, you know, for towing and or a citation, that it should be on them? With that being said, the issue is the amount of time that they spend on this type of crime that they could be doing other things going after those people you were talking about. What, what's your thought on that? I don't know. I would think that, like I say, I think there's a lot more important issues than their time. They're there, if a police officer is there for an eight-hour shift, what's the difference if he's doing this or he's doing that? He's on duty for the eight hours. If it's for this or that. He gets an emergency call. He runs. He gets a, somebody gets a flat tire, a parked car, and roll, become, they're on duty for the eight-hour or whatever shift is. So what this is different from what they're doing. You know, uh, well, I don't think you should really have to worry about, like I say, too many things in our lives that I think it's our own business and we are should be responsible for our own actions and nobody else. And this is just, again, you know, they want to keep everything hunky-dory in that, but the owner should be responsible. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Oh. Motion of course. Motion of course. Did you want to come up and speak? Uh, motion to close the floor. You didn't want to? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've waited all this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You were, uh, please, please. please <laughs> you My name is Terry Wolfgram. I'm at 725 South Roosevelt Street in Wisconsin. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, could I just read the ordinance? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so it's, um, uh, it's, on, it's uh, section number 29513. Uh, uh, leaving the keys in a vehicle, no person having custody of a motor vehicle shall permit the vehicle st to stand or remain unattended on any street, alley, public place in the city without first removing the keys uh, used to lock or unlock the operating vehicle. This section shall not apply to emergency vehicles or city vehicles being used for city operations. Okay? So, um, does this then pertain to UPS trucks? Uh, does this pertain to uh, other type of delivery trucks, those types of things? I'd ask that question. The other part of this is that I kind of feel like, you know, I first heard about that and I thought, well, okay, what are other communities are doing? Yes, and, and, and we had said that there was, uh, you know, municipalities in Eau Claire, I think Milwaukee, Madison. What is the data from that? Okay, what have they done in active? Has that decreased? We don't know that information. Has that prevented that? We don't really don't know that information. To me, I first read about that and I thought, okay, it's kind of punitive. I, I feel it is because you're already missing your car. It's being stolen. Okay, so whether it's going to be found or not, you're out of car, and now you're going to be fined for not having or for having your keys in there. The other thing that hit me was that, gentlemen, the last week, we've had a 60 degree fluctuation in the temperature. Did any of you go out and leave your cars running? <laughs> I mean, I did. I have a one stall garage. I live in an you know, older neighborhood. I don't have a luxury of two stall garage. So, you know, luckily it started. But you know, it's just that type of thing. Do I use it going in and leaving my car running at a convenience store? No. But in my driveway, okay? I know the ordinance says there, you know, leaving it on any street. I'd be interested, Andrew, from information, how many vehicles were stolen in driveways? 
You know, I think that would be the thing, is people are stealing in driveways. That's your own personal property. You know, they're trespassing. And where should the fine go? The perpetrator. They're the one that committed the crime. I didn't. Okay, I left my vehicle running, yeah, because it was cold out there. I you know, needed to warm up. So anyways, that's, that's my, my spiel. I've learned a lot tonight. I've learned a lot about drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> you know, and, and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of stuff that came on. You know, it's, so again, long. I don't want people to think, I don't want overreach, you know, like the servers. You know, and I felt that was kind of an overreach. The, let the tab know it's kind of controlling. You let them do that. And I just don't want, you know, when we start losing our freedoms, I know it's a little thing, but it kind of, this is a scary process. And really, you know, my car is in my car. It would really suck if somebody stole it. You know, I'd have to figure out how to get something else. Anyways, that's it, gentlemen. Okay. I was just going to ask real quick, uh, when you warm your car up, usually it's in your driveway, correct? Or in the garage? Yep. You don't, you don't normally leave it on the street? No. Yeah. No, okay. it's in the driveway. Okay. And again, the ordinance does not say driveway. Yeah. Would that be interpretation by the officer? I, no, no, you know, no. That's, I'd be no. clear. But you know, again, you know, I, I work in social services too. We always tell our parents, you know, not to leave your car running. Oh, my child's in there. Child. Take the child in. You know, we do that. Do they do that? No, they leave the car running with the kid in there. And that's, you know, because you get them unwrapped and stuff like that. So, you know, it's part of that thing. We, we want to make some social changes on people. It takes time. Look at how many people used to smoke. There's a lot less now. That's education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. It's mostly education now. You know, I think it is. I mean, my, you know, my, my cousins and my aunts and uncles smoke and stuff. So changes. All right. Any other questions? Thank, Thank you. you. Motion for the close of four. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Alder Vanderlees. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Floor is now closed. Um, I understand where people are coming from, but I, we are not talking about private property. We don't want to go on private property. We're not interested in that at all. Um, and as far as being punitive, yes, it, that's the purpose. But the purpose isn't to go out and make money for the police department. Or, uh, I mean, we hold people responsible all the time. If you don't buckle up your child, you can get uh, fined. I mean, we hold people responsible for their behavior all the time. And so I think, and that would be quite a considerable fine, that one. This one we're looking just to make a little something to help the police department uh, in a campaign of educating people. Uh, and I would really be even uh, to put like a, a two year sunset clause on this uh, ordinance that it be set a fine for $50, $55, can't drive 55, $50 and uh, the ordinance expires after two years. And at that time, we'll have data from our police department. We can go over that. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Who's been fined? Who hasn't, you know, how much has it been paid? We can look at that and determine if this has any value or not. Hopefully, maybe in two years, we'll all be driving automated cars and the whole thing's mute. Uh, nice car ride pipe drives itself. So uh, that's my motion that we send this to staff with a $50 fine and a two-year sunset. Is there a I'd second? Like just, I'd like to just weigh in before we sure. make that motion. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I understand this is a problem for the city, but I hate to penalize the patrons that do get their car taken. I think if they, if we took the, the towing fee and put that, I think that'd be a good start. Put the towing fee that they pay for the towing fee to get their car back. I know that the administration costs are you know, a lot more than what we're talking about, $50 or whatever it might be. But I, I would say if we charge them the towing fee, at, at least that would be a, a way to educate what's going on. And you know, I got some feedback from different people in my district. Their thoughts was, well, you know, it's the police's job. 
you know, that was what, you know, I, I got about six or eight calls that, that said that, you know, what are the police doing, you know? And, and that's their job. But I, I think if we look at, you know, just charging them, the people that do get their car stolen, say, well, there's, you have to pay your towing fee. And whatever that towing fee is, you, you, can, you can set the towing fee. Uh, just so I'm clear, that would be for all the cars that are stolen or just the ones that we determined the keys were in them at the time? I, I would stolen? say that if a car is stolen, uh, if you want to get your car back, you'd have to pay that towing fee. If, if you take your car to Chicago and it's stolen out of a parking ramp and, the, and, the, and they have it in a pounding lot, you'd have to pay to get that out at a pounding lot. Wherever, they don't have enough space to keep the cars there in Chicago. So you'd pay for that fee to, to get your car back. I would be in favor of, you know, you just pay for the fee that... Uh, the towing fee, wherever you have to tow it. Maybe you're locked to school, you got to tow it somewhere else. Um, I would be in favor of just a towing fee and uh, start out there. And, uh, you know, people would get education that way as well. And they wouldn't feel so, let's say, double, double dignity, as you'd say it. You know, they get hit first. Their car being stolen, maybe their car's wrecked. I had a car stolen once out of my yard years ago. And, you know, I, I was without a car for about five days. Kind of tough. I was only like, I was young. You know, it didn't make too much difference. <laughs> but I'm just saying, uh, I know what it is to have a car stolen. And, and I would be in favor of uh, the towing fee, that they would pay the towing fee, and that would be a, a tool of education uh, to get out in the community. And we wouldn't be saying, well, we're going to fine you. You know, I, I think that, you know, we were, I think the Green Bay Police Department does a good job as far as, you know, community output. You had the horses there for a while that, you know, you know, people are, you know, are willing to talk with the police and you know make you know interaction and, and, I, and I think this might be just a good tool to just charge them the towing fee and say gee you're sorry your car got stolen or whatever that's my, that's my thoughts that's how I'm gonna that's how I'm proposing it but uh, I mean you see well, we're on, yep. your, on your motion right now well uh, we can have some discussion yeah, I mean, on this I, now I I, I oppose uh, that idea for a couple reasons one is we're taking we're not only talking about we're talking about all cars now and I think there's going to be a, a much bigger uproar about someone who uh, went to bed and somebody broke in and uh, I don't know if they can have one, whatever it takes to get the car going again and steal the car. I mean, they're completely innocent. Then you're really being in well, the victim of a crime, someone who's not careless. The, the, the purpose of this is this can be considered careless behavior and for two years, we're going to say in an effort to try and educate people to say, this is careless, our, our, our people have been stealing cars, it's on the rise, you, you know, this is a concern, uh, you have a better chance because of people being aware of this and, and, and stealing cars, of is happening to you, and uh, so we put a $50 fine value on it, that, and not just for those who and their car stolen, but for anybody, the police, if they go in to get gas and they see somebody's with their key in there, they can warn them. That's part of the purpose here of, it's not just stolen vehicles, it's anybody who leaves their key. And I don't think the police are gonna be out there trolling, looking for vehicles with dangling keys. It's gonna be catch as catch can as you're going through your regular duties. And I, again, I don't think the purpose is to you know, punish people, it's to inform people, and you need a little something behind it to get their attention. I, I got a quick question. Uh, Chief, maybe you can answer this. Um, so, I'm losing my train here. Here comes the caboose. Oh boy. So, okay, let's say there's a $50 fine out there. If you're talking about education, so you're saying that you know, your officers would come in and say, tell somebody, okay. And in effect, it's almost a warning, right? Yes, sir. So if you get one warning, if you do a test, then you would get a citation? Would no. that be like a normal type police activity? You know, this idea was actually hatched by a couple of our community policing officers. I think they had uh, issues in their neighborhood where they would see the same cars running over and over again and just uh, waiting for someone to steal it. Mm -hmm. um, and they would warn people and didn't seem to have any effect on people. They just really didn't seem to care. So I think the idea is they wanted to have at least a little bit of teeth to say, hey, Mr. Jones, I've warned you two or three times about your car being on the street, and you're still doing it. You know, there's kids in the neighborhood walking to school. It's a really big temptation. And think about that. 
if you're warming your car up in the morning out on the street and the little kids are walking by or adolescents or kids that are in the crime prone years and they take your car what are they going to do with it they're going to hot rod it around, they're gonna, you know, they're not licensed, they're probably not great drivers, and we all heard the expression, drive it like you stole it. Um, they're not gonna be out there obeying all laws and doing things we, we would do as regular drivers. So it's like, I've likened it to leaving a loaded weapon on your front porch. Do you leave a firearm on your front porch? You know, I think it's kind of the same thing. Do you leave your wallet on your front porch? Yes, it's illegal to steal it. Yes, uh, there's a fine if you do steal it, and if we catch you, go to jail. But why tempt fate? Why allow your car or that firearm on your front porch or your wallet in your front on your driveway? Why would we tempt thieves and give them this opportunity? And the opportunity they took 50 times in our city last year. 48, what did I say, 48% of the cars stolen had their keys in them. If you got a better idea to get people to stop getting their car stolen, cut crime, car theft in half by just taking your keys out of the car. Holy smokes, if you could tell me I could cut viol domestic violence in half in this city by just one thing, holy smokes, man. I think we'd all get, you know, bronze bus of us in front of the police station. Well, I, I like the fact, you know, you said there's other communities out there that you've done studies on. Sir. You know, and, and I think part of you know, my request was to find out how much, how many privately you know, cars and driveways are taken, you know, that type of thing. And I have that, and I, I can shoot you that info. this ordinance right now, but I, I would feel more comfortable if we had a little more of that information. So I think part of me, even though I agree in essence with the majority of this, I still don't feel comfortable voting for it at this time. Well, we could refer it to staff to make the changes, comes back, we can come back with that information, make I, a decision then. I would feel better about that. Right. So just that more, I would make a motion that this would be referred back to staff with some of those concerns that we talked about. I don't know if you need those in there. I already made that motion. You did. I needed, I needed a second. Okay. Well, you made that motion? I believe I did. And was the it? motion to include, so well, fifty dollar fine, to amend, well, see, to a two year sunset, reduce the fine to fifty dollars, and to provide a two year sunset clause, <laughs> and for staff. Make these changes, put it in the, and they come back, and provide, then you decide. Right, I, I don't mind it going back to staff, but with the, the $50, of course, we could say, no, that, that will work or not work. Right. I mean, you're just saying you're putting it in there. Right. I don't necessarily fully agree with that at this moment. Right. But if it goes back to staff, they can talk right. about that. Yeah. When it goes uh, back, we can, do, we can kill it. We can make any other changes that we decide to do in the meantime. This is just to get something, send would, it to staff to get something else in front of us. Right, I'm not, I'm, I'm not so sure I'm keen on the fine. I know that's part of what you think is important to be brought forward with the fine. I think it's all, like you said, double indemnity already, you know, losing your car, so having it stolen. I like all the Vanderlees talk about you know, paying for the towing. I think that puts the onus on them. That, that would be the penalty, I think. You, know, you lost your car, but you know what? In order to get it back, you, you know, you've got to be accountable and responsible. So well, I, feel, I feel that's important as well. Right. The problem with that is, are you going to are you going to do it straight across the board with everybody who got their car stolen? If you're not, no. then it's, it's easy for someone to say, my keys were not left in the car. They must have stolen my keys somehow. How do you prove that? You're just making the work complicated. Simplify this with a fifty dollar fine. I just like to weigh in here, Randy, mm -hmm. on that. Uh, <coughs> Towing fee. Chief Smith. I'm not back off, but. Okay, Chief Smith. Regardless, you still have to pay that towing fee. Is that correct? We still have to pay that towing fee. That's taxpayer money. Yep. The money for the towing fee and the money for the cops and the money for the processing of the car comes not from me. It comes from us. Okay. So when your car gets stolen, you cost the city 500 bucks. You cost your fellow taxpayers 500 bucks. That's why I'd, I'd love to cut this crime down in half. Holy man! I, I would. I would say that uh, if we went with. Uh, Right across the board, as far as your car is stolen, regardless of where it's stolen, and the Green Bay Police Department has to pay for the, the towing, that's that's your fine right there. Mm -hmm. If it costs if it costs $100, if, you, if the fee goes up for towing, they pay more. In other words, it's, the, the penalty is regulated on the towing fees that's related to your vehicle if it's stolen, regardless if it's stolen out of your, your rear garage or your front garage or on the street or anywhere. In other words, the Green Bay Police Department 
still has to pay that toy. My, my thoughts would be to, you know, to get the car back, they got to pay those towing fees. And that, that, would be the, that would be another penalty, basically, that they would incur regardless how it's stolen. And right. it, it would generate more revenue than just the five or ten that are coming in. If you've got 20 cars stolen, they're all going to pay for that towing fee. I know in Chicago, if your car is stolen, it goes to an impounding lot. And in order to get that lot, get that car out, you might pay two or three hundred for the towing. Right. But my only, and I'll, we'll do whatever you guys decide because that's what you guys get to do. The only thing that people have been shooting darts at me about is we're penalizing the victims. And so that's the big gripe that everybody yeah. says is you're penalizing the victims a second time. They got their car stolen, even if it's through no fault of theirs, and now you're going to penalize them again. That's what that's the feedback I've been getting. And 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 and, get, and paying for the. Uh, Towing fee is not penalizing anybody. It's, it's they're getting their car back. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is a good. That's the best. My thoughts. That that's the way I'd want to do it. If you're gonna if you're gonna write it up, anybody's car that's stolen, they pay for that towing fee. First of all, we're we're changing the we're changing the focus of this. We're going completely off the focus of trying to be an education. It's, covering, it's a broader it's a broader perspective okay. as far as uh, you know. If your car is stolen, you got to pay for your your uh, towing fees to get your car back. Right. Right. And then, then we are definitely hitting 